Hey, the Morota is an attorney for Ulises Cabrera, our allies from the Dominican Republic. Haiti has over 20 years of experience, and she has specialized in project financing, foreign inversion, banking regulation, insurance law, and many others. Haiti will uh, join us today to explain a little bit on how investment for foreigners might look uh, in the Dominican Republic. Haiti, how will you say uh, you, a foreigner particularly, can start a, a startup a venture in the Dominican Republic? For me, it's very important to first understand the economic sector in which you want to invest and understand a little bit of the business in which you want to develop here in the Dominican Republic. Because depending on the type of business and what you have in mind to develop here in the Dominican Republic, regulated sectors have their own areas and requirements that the company needs to meet. So for me, the first thing to understand is what do you want to do and how do you want to do it? So you can either do it through a local company or you can domicile in the Dominican Republic any company from any part of jurisdiction. Okay. Uh, from any jurisdiction. Panama is a very popular jurisdiction here in the Dominican Republic, as a matter of fact. So basically is understanding what which type what type of service the client may want to to start. There will be some previous steps to consider. And there will be some benefits uh, depending on the type of industry the client wants to dive in. And going back to the incentives, some of the incentives laws that we have have to do with the promotion of tourism and energy. Those are the most popular ones that we have. Another one that is having a big boom is the cinematography sector. And all oh, those laws, yes, and all of those laws have incentives for the uh, for the local or local or foreign investors. And actually, we have here in the the office, we work um, and regularly update an incentives guide, which by sector, we list the in, the requirements and the incentives that investors obtain in each sector. So I can share that with you. Let's move to a separate subject, and that is uh, investing in real estate in the Dominican Republic. Can a foreigner do it as a private person? Does it require using a, a local entity or well, how difficult it is for a foreigner to invest in real estate? A person, a foreigner can invest in the Dominican Republic personal. They just need a copy of their passports and that's it. The tax agency will immediately grant a tax identification, but it's an informative tax identification. Aside from the fiscal obligations associated to the property, the person itself won't have any tax obligations in the Dominican Republic. So right. you can do it personally or you can do it through a company. Going into that subject, I'm guessing you still have to pay property taxes or so some of, sort of tax related to the property value. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, right. You need to pay, if you buy it personally, it's 1% of the value of the property. You buy it through a company, it's 1% of the assets of the company. Of the company, okay, that that will make a difference. That is, if the company operates, you pay whatever it's higher of income tax or tax on assets. So here's the but. Mm -hmm. I mentioned earlier that we have many incentives laws, and one of those incentives laws is in the tourism sector. So if the property you're purchasing is in a tourist area, and the project in which you're purchasing the property from is it has the incentives of that law, which is commonly known as the Ley de Confortura, then that property, when you buy it, you will be exempt of uh, the transfer tax, which is 3% of the value of the property, and you will be exempt from paying either the 1% of the property tax or the 1% of the tax. I'm guessing that would qualify for example, if I want to invest either privately as a private person or under a company, whether it's a foreigner, a foreign company or not, uh, if I want to rent this property, that that would count as an operation of the company and these benefits incentives would also apply to that. And my daughter within it's that- It's attached is. to the property, so it so it does. Okay, moving forward and just almost to, to close up, uh, what would you say are the three flagship services of your firm, particularly aimed to international clients? We're a full service law firm. So depending on the different departments of the company, I would list the top services that we offer by department. 
I would say that we'd work a lot with the registry of trademarks. If we're going with our real estate department, well, obviously everything related to the purchase of properties here in the Dominican Republic, especially very thorough due to diligence of the property before you buy. That is very key and very important. We have a lot of experience with all of regulated sectors. That's basically my main uh, sector. We also work a lot with agency and distribution mm -hmm. because we have a very protective law here in the Dominican Republic. So for our foreign clients, we make sure to review those contracts as to helping them avoid being under the trap of those very conservative uh, distribution and agency laws that we have here in the Dominican Republic. Well, that's fantastic, Katie. That's, that's quite comprehensive. I know in Europe, uh, I know that, that, that Luis Cabrera is a large firm. You've been doing business for almost 60 years, and I know it, it's com uh, composed of how many attorneys or staff members? Well, we are currently seven partners, 20 associates. So for a Dominic associates? For Dominican law firms, it's we're a large law firm. Very well. It's good to know that that you will have our clients' needs uh, all covered. That, that, that's good to know. Yes. Okay, I think that that's it. Unless there's any other, I don't know, contribution to consider convenient to mention or... Yes, one, one, uh, one final thing that I wanted to mention is that we, at, in 2020, enacted a private-public uh, procurement law whereby all of these big infrastructure projects are being done jointly by both the government and internationally, usually, large developers in the country. So that's an area to watch out for clients that which wish to invest in the Dominican Republic in large infrastructures. Thank you, Heidi, for your time. Uh, we'll, we'll send this to our clientele and see if any, any uh, leads or any interest is arise as soon as it does. Of course, you'll hear back from me and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure uh, talking to you today. And to all of those uh, members and clients out there, especially to the AGA members, nice seeing you. Thank you.